Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the absolute convergence test. So before you watch this video, make sure you watched my video, or at least you know about the alternating series test, or else this video is not gonna make any sense. So with the absolute convergence test, we are continuing our conversation of alternating series. So for instance, n equals one to infinity of negative one to the nth power times the rest of your series a sub n. This is normally the format. And just as a quick example, this might look like something like this. Okay, so this is an example of when you'd use absolute convergence test or alternating series test. Now, if the question asks to use the absolute convergence test, or if you see the words converges absolutely or converges conditionally, then this is another sign that you need the absolute convergence test and maybe the alternating series test as well. So here's how you use the absolute convergence test. First, you start with your series, n equals whatever to whatever, of some alternating series that looks like this. I am separating the alternating part from the rest of the series. So to tell if it converges absolutely, if your series converges absolutely, then you need to prove that the same exact series, but no alternating part converges using one of the other nine tests we have for determining series. So for instance, that can be the integral test, the limit comparison test, the direct comparison test, a geometric series, a telescoping series, the ratio test, or a root test. And I believe that's it. And if you can prove that that converges without the alternating part, then we say it converges absolutely. Now, let's say it fails this test, so it doesn't converge absolutely. We can still converge conditionally if the series a sub n passes the alternating series test. So if you fail the absolute convergence test, but you pass the alternating series test, then we get to say converges conditionally. And if you fail both of these tests, if you fail both the absolute convergence test, which I'll abbreviate ACT for short, and you fail the alternating series test, AST for short, then we say the series diverges and you're done. That's it. So here's some tips whenever a question asks if the series converges conditionally, converges absolutely, or diverges. My tip to you is you should guess converge or diverge. If you think the series will converge, then do the absolute convergence test first. Because if you're right and it converges absolutely, then you're done. You don't have to even do the alternating series test. If your guess is diverge, then do the alternating series test first. And now there's four outcomes that can happen here. The first one is that you pass the absolute convergence test. When that happens, we say converges absolutely. And that's your final answer. Now what's interesting is if I fail the absolute convergence test, then I do an alternating series test. And again, I get one of two results. If I pass it, then that means we converged conditionally. And if I fail this alternating series test and I failed the absolute convergence test, okay, now we say diverges. And these are our possible outcomes for the absolute convergence test and the alternating series test. But if we decided to do the alternating series first, again, because we guessed diverge, then we're hoping we fail this test. Because if we fail this test, Great, we get to write diverges immediately and be done with the problem. However, worst case scenario, we pass the alternating series test. Well, then I'm gonna have to go to the absolute convergence test. And then if I pass this, well, then this is converges absolutely. And if I fail this test, then it converges conditionally. So these are the six outcomes we could possibly have with the alternating series and absolute convergence tests. So let's look at some examples and start to get a hand for it. So first one, series from n equals one to infinity 
of numerator, negative one to the n plus one, denominator, n squared minus six n. My guess for this one is converges. And the reason why I say that is because even if that alternating part isn't there, the denominator looks to me like one over n squared form, in other words, a p-series. So I'm gonna guess converges, and I'm gonna prove it using the limit comparison test, which if you don't know how to do that, you can watch my video on the limit comparison test, and I explain it very well if I don't say so myself. So to do the limit comparison test, this is my a sub n, this is my b sub n, but remember I'm ignoring the alternating part, so a sub n is really one over n squared minus six n. So anyways, to do the limit comparison test, I take the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n over a sub n, which looks like one over n squared divided by one over n squared minus six n. This is a complex fraction. I can multiply by the reciprocal, which would give me this. And then that becomes n squared minus six n over n squared. And this is still the limit as n goes to infinity. So I look at this and I say the degrees are equal. So therefore, this limit will equal n squared over n squared, essentially, which reduces to one. And because one is a finite non-zero number, then that means both series are going to converge. In other words, we passed the absolute convergence test. So we say converges absolutely. And I don't even need to check with the alternating series test. We converged absolutely. Fantastic. Now for the second one I have, let's say it's the series from n equals one to infinity of n factorial divided by negative two to the nth power. So this is alternating because of the negative two to the nth power, so don't worry about that. My guess is going to be diverges because in general, factorials are stronger than nth power. So in other words, I think the numerator is going to explode faster than the denominator. Because my guess is diverges, based on experience, is how I derived that, then I'm going to start with the alternating series test, which means I just gotta take the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over two to the nth, because remember, for alternating series test, it's absolute value, so I get rid of all the negative parts, and now I gotta figure out if this converges or diverges. I'll be honest, it's kind of impossible to tell a limit for a factorial. What I like to do is I like to plug in a really big number for n, like for instance, 999, because 999 factorial divided by two to the 999th power, hopefully you realize which one's bigger. Because the top one is 999 times 998 times 997 times 996, all the way down until times one. The other one, two to the 999, is two times two times two times two, 996 more times, ultimately ending in another two. And which one's bigger? I'm gonna tell you the factorial is always gonna be bigger here, I promise. So in other words, the numerator's bigger. Because the numerator is bigger, this thing is shooting off to infinity. This limit will be infinity which means we failed the alternating series test, and so we can just say diverges immediately. Now for the third and final question we have today. It's the series from n equals two to infinity of negative one to the n of the natural log of n divided by n. Now for this one, it's not so obvious whether it converges or diverges. The good news is your guess doesn't matter because if you're wrong, we have to do both tests anyway. So. My guess will be converges because I'm feeling optimistic. So first I do the absolute convergence test. That means I consider the series from n equals two to infinity of the absolute value, so get rid of the negative part, and it's just this. Now I'm pretty sure this actually diverges, so I would probably use an integral test because integral test works pretty well whenever I have natural log. Now there's three conditions. This function has to be continuous, positive and decreasing before I can even use the integral test. I'm just gonna tell you I, I meet those conditions, great. So in other words, I transform this series into an integral from two to infinity of natural log of x over x dx. This is just a simple u substitution where u equals natural log of x, du equals one over x dx, 
and dx equals x du, leaving me with the integral from two to infinity of u over x times x du. Looks like the x's cancel. I know this integral is gonna be u squared over two, and then I have to evaluate from infinity to two. Plug back in for my u substitution, so ln x. So it's gonna be ln x squared over two, evaluated from infinity to two. And this is gonna explode because it's the natural log of infinity squared, which is gonna be infinity. So in other words, this diverges. Now before I circle this answer, it doesn't diverge, I just know that it does not converge absolutely. In other words, I can still converge conditionally, and to prove that, I need to go to the alternating series test, which is to say, take the limit as n goes to infinity of my series, or the absolute value of my series, so natural log of n over n, and this will be infinity over infinity, so I can do L'Hopital's rule, which if you forget L'Hopital's rule, you can find it online, but basically you just take the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately. So derivative of the numerator is one over n, derivative of the denominator is one. This is just one over infinity, which is zero, which means yes, we passed the alternating series test. And because we passed the alternating series test and we failed the absolute convergence test, this is when we get to say, converges conditionally. So here's a tip for you. If you know the series is gonna converge conditionally, then you will always need both tests, alternating series and absolute convergence test. So it doesn't matter which one you start with, you will need both. And that's all the questions I have to look at today. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.